Hello everyone and welcome to the CLSR and I'm your host and counselor. Today we're going to talk about this debate that has happened on September 29th, 2020 between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Now this is a topic, a contentious issue, and I've heard some feedback and listened very carefully about some of the responses. Now through the media there's a lot of people who are very upset I'm sure around the world there's some people who are very disgruntled and they're even laughing at the United States because of this debate situation. However, we have to hold up for a second. The world has to take into consideration that we are all going through our stresses. And I really believe that during these trying times, a lot of these behaviors that are coming out they're shining brightly like the Donald Trump is because of th we're under a lot of pressure. Now, that's not an excuse for Donald Trump. So we're going to look at both sides. And I would like to talk about the position of Donald Trump first and what my perception is and see if you can correlate it to people's perspective out there, right? what they're thinking about Donald Trump. Let me tell you, when I heard the debate, I will tell you that what I think about Donald Trump is, is that he's a businessman. And what we need to understand is that when you have a businessman in the White House, there are certain things that he's going to neglect. And that may be that social aspect. The social aspect is going to be greatly diminished. Now, the problem is, is that United States, as Obama was leaving office, just bringing the economy back on track through a lot of social welfare and recovery. He did a great job in the midst of the recession. And sure enough, comes a businessman. Now, one thing we got to say is we like to point the finger at the Donald Trumps out there. However, the real problem is, is that there are people out there who have voted them in. The party, the Republicans, and they hold a lot of Senate seats, but the people voted them in. And there are going to be people out there that say, you know what, that's bull because the elections are rigged. Well, if the elections were rigged, unfortunately, we didn't get to the bottom of how they were rigged and there's something wrong with the government over there because they were not able to put their finger on it. And one thing I'm finding is that through Donald Trump, we are learning a lot if we sit back and we listen. And we really have to listen. I don't mean listen to the words. Listen to the words, the actions of not just Donald Trump, but the Republicans. And I would say that there are Republicans who really could do some real good. However, it's being overshadowed by profit. So I would have to say that Donald Trump is basically an example of the establishment. Now, I know a lot of people who don't have the have-nots are looking at the situation and we have the tendency to look forward and look up at the Republicans and go the money mongers they're in business and are taking advantage of the people. However, we live in a democracy. And when you live in a democracy, you have to start asking yourself some questions. When you have a democracy, you have to upgrade the rules and the regulations. And we have not done that. We have not seen that in the United States. They have their politics, but they're not really changing with the times. That's why there's a lot of manipulation going on, because we are spending more time having these political parties fight each other than keep the system up and relevant. And what do I mean by up and relevant? I mean that the political system has gone astray in a lot of ways because we have neglected the people the rights of the people, right, with policies and procedures that take forever to get in place to help the people. See, right now, even during COVID-19, there's a lot of people who are out of work and they're still waiting for the plan, that plan that's going to phase two, the plan that's going to help the struggling. Why is this happening? Because our politicians are fighting each other. 
which there are going to be challenges, but we needed to make sure that from some of the experiences of the past that we made some real changes. And I think when you see politicians in power going astray and abusing that power and the people not doing anything about it or having any say about it, then we're in trouble. And I could see that even in the United States, when we start to see presidents out there slipping, having sex with interns and, you know, ones who are uh, getting in with parties who are, you know, in favor of the right wing. And, you know, you see po politicians getting contributions, multi-million dollar contributions. Or when you see billionaires who enter the race for presidency in the middle of the selection process, which means because they have so much money, right? The people have been fooled to say, well, because they're billionaires, they uh, they know how to do business. Well, doing business on a major global scale is a whole lot different than doing it through an organization that's in your home state or that's even across the country. Uh, delegating and working with countries is a whole different ballgame. However, we have millionaires who can definitely enter the race because they have money, they have influence, right? And they can market and advertise to the masses. And of course, eventually it's going to work. It's, and you're probably thinking to yourself, I mean, I've wondered to myself, why are some of these billionaires spending billions of dollars for a race that they probably will never win? But they do it anyway. Well, because they know the system. They have people working for them that could probably get their money back, their write-offs, whatever, through their business. So they figure that that's a way to get in. See, the real candidates who could really do some good for the country, who put their work in, the ones who, not just business people, but people who've actually done advocacy work, who've, who've got community experience, not community handout, but they actually can see it from all sides. Now, what I'm saying is we have to look at the context of everything. And we have to say what state was the United States in even prior to Donald Trump? Well, it was lacking in a lot of areas for sure, but it was improving in a lot of areas. But now it seems chaos. The real truth is, is that there's always room for improvement, but the political system it has a stain on it. And it's because it's the one with the most money and the most marketing potential and the television personalities. So people are tapping into that psychology of, well, this person here is on television like the Donald Trump. He's done Apprentice. We like him. He's popular, well-known, and he's rich. And this personality, and the reason why I say we need to get our political system together is because he's not the only celebrity that's been president. Let's think of some of the celebrities that have been, have gone on to be president. And I'm saying the Ronald Reagan, right? Like we can name a host of them, especially ones who become politicians. Now, can TV celebrities be good politicians? And I'm going to say, Hmm. If you can prove it, if you have a record and you have experience, you should be getting the job. Now, if it's just based on business, then I'm very concerned. And see, now we're seeing through Donald Trump what is going on. I'm sure he has good intents with business, but the United States can't just be about business for it to thrive, not just survive. And what I'm concerned about here in our country of Canada, I would love to point the fingers. We're going to talk about the debate. But in our own country, we have some ills. And we have the Trudeaus, which may seem like they're having their good intent. And I'm telling you, but there are people like the Bill Mornos, the people in power who are doing a little bit of uh, pocketing and a little bit of uh, privilege passing out and passing money to communities like the We Foundation, which is really a scandal because I know organizations who could use the money and the support. And we see that uh, 
Would they throw money where uh, these organizations who are lining their pockets with money through these nonprofit organizations? And uh, basically, that 5% is getting paid again, which to me, that's really not democracy. So we have our problems here in Canada. However, in the United States, uh, what you have to do is you have to say, well, one thing, it is a democracy. Right? So I guess everyone gets to vote. However, what we need to do is we need to understand that money should not be the issue when it comes to selection. Do you understand? That should not be just the part. Sure, you want to know how to run business. Yes, I'm sure that there's a spectrum there. But my concern is that we are allowing a lot of this behavior in politics, even in the United States topple the people it's politics over the people the people don't really have say anymore we're seeing things in the united states that is really really concerning it's supposed to be a power country i remind you we're dealing with the covid19 and we have the um george floyd disgraces of the united states which continue to uh be a plague on the country they can't get it together there's no accountability and uh, unfortunately, these incidents keep going on. And when you have a leadership that cannot acknowledge that, that's a problem. Okay. However, let's go back to the debate. And what I'm going to say with Donald Trump is that he's wealthy. He has a number of assets. However, one thing he has shown us through great intense observation is that it takes a lot more than a rich person who is popular in the eyes to run a country. And we, what we need to do is we need to say there has to be some sort of balance. There cannot be a one-sided story where we look at it and say, wait a minute, why are we supposed to be a multicultural society? However, we are seeing clearly the head of the government who are aligning themselves with right wing. Now, you got to say this. A lot of people say, oh, Donald Trump's a racist. He's a bigot. All these things. I really believe he's a politician who uh, notices that, listen, if I get rid of my right wing, these are voters. These are voters. I don't care. This See, this is the thing. In business... The emotional, you drop the emotional and you make your decisions. You don't sit there and rattle. No, he's not going to. People are saying, hey, listen, why don't you denounce the right wing? Well, those are votes. There's, those are votes. Those are the things that could keep him in for another term. So why is he going to tell them? That's why he's saying, stand down and stand by, because it's not like I want you to go away anywhere. It's not that I'm pushing your agenda per se. A lot of people say the opposite, but I say, let's look at it for what it is. He's far from just the problem. But what I'm saying is we don't seem to understand that we put this president in place. And you're going to have different presidents. And the pandemic that we're going through, he is showing that, listen, you're going to have deaths because of COVID-19. Almost every country has deaths because of this. They, there are people dying and they continue to die. However, the amount of deaths could be mitigated in the fact that if we have proper management and we also have everybody working together. Unfortunately, during this crisis, the United States is having some difficulty working together. It is politics over the people. And see, the people are struggling. And we need to do that. We need to bring it back. So during this debate, what I'm seeing is a Donald Trump, he is arguing that he's done a great job. And he's telling people that the United States economy is done better than it has. And the economy in the United States might have done a lot better than it has done in a number of years. I mean, he has done some... Uh, deals that have kind of put Americans to work and he's actually solidified some contracts and he's putting America first. So my only thing is with him is that he's missing a lot of points and those are social points, his connectedness, his understanding. He's, he's one-sided and that's very worrisome. 
and it's business. And he knows that the United States needs business. It really does. And when he complains about the environment and how it's forest management that's messing up the environment and how the science, we can harp. But see, he's a voice for many people out there. And that's what we need to be aware of. The voice of Donald Trump is speaking for a lot of people. And I'm not just talking Caucasian people. He's talking for a lot of people. Republicans aren't just white. There's black Republicans out there too. So he's speaking for a lot of people. So instead of us just attacking right, and putting him down, we have to understand that this is the face of a lot of people in the United States. And it's not just the people who are rich. It's people who are working who haven't worked. It's people who don't understand the social aspect. It's people who have not had people who are less fortunate to them in their neighborhoods. It's people who could give a damn less about what happens to other people than themselves. And it's also people who realize, well, listen, if we don't have certain corporations operating in the country, they might go elsewhere. That's their mentality. Whereas if we really think about it, there is no elsewhere. If you're going to be a powerful democracy and you're going to sustain it. See, one thing I'm finding that the Republicans are missing is that democracy in the United States is just not the United States. And that's what is happening with the Republicans. The democracy that we should be having is we want the world to be democratic. We want the rights of the world. We want to influence the world. We don't just want to be number one when it comes to the economy. We want to be number one when it comes to the rights of the people. We want to be number one when it comes to influencing people to have the right to stand up, to be free, to have their say, and to vote in a democracy around the world. And if we have people in politics that is stopping that cohesion and they're just going on the, the advice that, listen, the only way we're going to thrive is if we single ourselves out and we thrive on our own. No, no, there's an aspect of that that needs to be checked. We have to be worldwide. Let's look across these other countries out there. There's a lot of need and understanding. Like, if we think about it, even in 2020 with this pandemic, people look at nice and say, oh, you're trying to separate yourselves. Sure, we got to take care of United States and Canada. And that. However, we can do it on the world stage. And instead of being more connected to the masses, we are becoming less connected. And see, when we see this leadership of less connectedness, we don't understand. We're, we're failing ourselves because we have an obligation around the world to give people rights and freedoms, to feed people, to make sure they're taken care of, not to judge and point the finger. Yes, we know there are adversities out there. We know there are people out there who are operating countries and they have this military rule. Our job is to create democracy. Are there ways that we do it? Yes, we do it through sanctions or what have you. And that takes work. So I think the Donald Trump Republicans and the Democrats, they have some work to do. And they have to start learning that we are missing out in a lot of ways. These are trying times. But when it comes to debate, Donald Trump is arguing that he's done so many things right. He has done some things that are right. And he's done a lot of things that are wrong. And the thing is, I really believe we've lost our focus. He might have started, but unfortunately, we need a new party. We need a new party in there. We need a party that's not just Democrats and Republicans. We need a neutral party that could start seeing what's going on and make some real changes. And that's the young people. We need to get the young people into the politics. And see, a lot of these young people won't even have a chance because what's dominating the arena? Money? right? Money. Money is one of the major ones. A lot of them who don't have money and the experience, we have to have some mentoring programs with these politicians. We have to have, in government, we have to have leadership. We have to actively involve young people in our leadership. And we're not seeing that. We're missing that boat. See, when we have people, young people going around the world talking about the environment, we're not listening. When we have 
one person, a young lady, talking about the environment and people are ignoring it because of profit, because we want to survive for today. But the truth is, forest fires, pollution, air quality, death rate, even this virus that we have is a cause of neglect. And we could do something about it, but we don't care. We're older. And see, what thing about older people is they have this mindset that they know what's right, but they're not listening, right? They've built up a bunch of bias through the years. So when we think of the Donald Trumps, he might have a business mindset. However, we need to understand it takes more than that. And see, when we talked about him... See, people are pointing out when he was revealing his taxes. And then so what happens is they revealed his taxes and they said over a 10-year period, he only paid $750 in taxes. And people are alarmed by it. And I'm saying, wait a minute, hold up. Alarmed? Yes. Should he pay his fair share? Yes, he should. But we shouldn't be focusing that he pay his fair share and, oh, he's so bad. And next case, no, what we should be looking at is, um, that's a lot. And there, people are saying, oh, that's from the Obama era. That's not from the Obama era. Sure, he gave out relief packages, but that's what our economy is built on. See, the problem as well is our whole economy doesn't work. And we haven't been truthful to ourselves. It hasn't worked. We have more poor people than we've had in centuries, right? Sure, there's wealthy. There's wealthier people, but there's a minimum of wealthy people. But they're billionaires, but there's less of them. People say, oh, there's more millionaires. Listen to me. The truth is when you have hungry people, and if you look at some of these states, even in the United States, the state of these states can be disheartening. The rights of a lot of people, the you know, we're, we have to bring it back. And see, Donald Trump was trying to say, look, we have to bring business back. We have to. We have to bring business back. We got to uh, get the trade in order. And he's done a lot of those things. However, the social aspect and how to do it is a challenge. And I think what we have in government is we need to, we need to have not just a democracy, or a Republican Party. We need to have that social. Like when I think of even Quebec, where they have a program where when it comes to decision makers, they have the social decision makers, the business decision makers, and the government collaborating on decisions. So it isn't just bailing out the banks, right? Or bailing out these corporations that have violated our rights and taken our money and put people into retirement. That's not what we should be about. We should have a three-point system, and it should be social decisions, it should be uh, government, and it should be business working hand-in-hand, hand. not two parties fighting each other, one being more social than the other being more business, right? So, yes, we have to have business, but we've lost our balance. And what I could see with Donald Trump is people are very upset because he's disrupting. He's reactionary. And people are saying that behavior is disgraceful. It's disrespectful. And what I'm saying is we can point the finger at Donald, but Donald's not the problem. The problem is the American people are the problem because they're looking at the situation and they're pointing the finger and they're not looking at, wait, we not only voted him in. How many of us have said, you know what, we're going to go along with what's being put on. We're going to go along with military beating on people. We're going to go along with police violating certain people's rights. Why, why, why are we doing that? It's never a one-sided story. However, what I'm saying is, is that there's a lot of change that needs to occur. We need to revamp the system, not with long legislation. We need to revamp the system on how... It is that we put people in powerful positions, right? It shouldn't just be just the vote. There should be some experience there, right? There should be some experience there. Can you blame Donald Trump? No, you can't because he's a person that knows the system. And once the system is predictable, we have a problem.
Now, do we need to get along with people around the world? Yes, we do. We need to get along with the Chinese. We need to get along with Putin. We need to get along with all these countries out there. Afghanistan, Syria, uh, Canada. We do need to work with them. We have to have some collaboration for sure. It's not an easy game. However, if we take ourselves out of the game, we don't know what's going on across the world. And that's what is happening with the United States. They're doing that inner fighting. And yes, people should be standing up. People should stand up in those streets. They should stand up for the rights. Black people too, for sure. It's terrible what's going on, right? Racism, yes, it's there. It's not just there about black people, but it seems to be a real, real, real issue in the United States where people cannot learn to get past it. They can't learn to work together. And instead of working together, we're getting further apart. Now, I can't say all people aren't. No, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say Caucasian, uh, people of all different... I'm going to tell you the good thing about this George Floyd, and I didn't think there was one, but there are a lot of people standing up. And I don't care what the media says. Oh, there's a lot of bad people out there. No, no, no. Let's not do that. Let's not paint it with one brush. There are people of all different cultures and colors working together to say it's wrong. And I want to thank those people out there to say yes, because these are better days. And sometimes this chaos in the world needs a shakeup. Because if it wasn't for social media or people being there, these things probably wouldn't be front and center. They really wouldn't. If it wasn't for the brave men and women who Black Lives Matter have stood up and said it's enough. And I remember when they were starting out years ago and no one was paying attention and people were getting their backs up. But now that people are um, standing up and speaking their piece and, you know, advocating and they're not quitting the fight, it's not a go away. This is real. And this should B, unless something gets done, real change. And I don't mean just you charge somebody because they've done that. No, you need policy, you need people, you need community, and you need the police working better with the community. And we also need accountability in all aspects of society. We got to be more accountable with what we're doing. But we also got to make sure that people are getting what they need. We have to make sure that we're not creating dire situations and ignoring segments of society where they can operate in isolation, right? We have to keep it together. And that is about not just leadership at the very top. That's about encouraging leadership right from the beginning and understanding that, yes, we society has its problems and these issues that are going in 2020 are going to keep rearing their head up. However, this is a time we, where we collectively come together and stop pointing the finger. And I think when this debate was going on, I can't say that it was a pleasant thing to watch. I mean, I was a little bit discouraged because when I did see Donald Trump interrupting constantly, I thought, okay, wait, we still have to have some balance there. There still needs to be rules in place. And it did remind me of an individual who was very confrontational and reactive and very outspoken. And this person was actually rude and felt like they were being attacked. So their responses out there were considered rude and many times they were rude. So basically, instead of acting... And thinking and observing, they were reacting. And I think when it comes to Donald Trump, like a lot of the words we could go on and say, okay, he said this, it shouldn't have been that, and this was offensive, and we could nitpick. However, what we need to do is we need to look at the display of behavior. And when we think of leadership, we have to say, okay, wait a second. There are parts there that are clearly indicating that the social aspect and the care with the individual it's definitely misplaced, if not even non-existent. So it's all business there. And my concern is that when you have a 
unruly person, an individual who's just speaking over everybody and responding and not necessarily cooperating with the process, then you find that it's very problematic because how can we really get things done if we have somebody who's imparting their opinion no matter the situation, they're going to tell you what they want to tell you so they're not hearing other people. And matter of fact, the person who is trying to follow the process is getting agitated and responsive. And that's a society that we're living in today. So yeah, I, we could go back and say, well, we've never had a president that's ever done this before, who's ever tweeted or used social media to attack people. We've never had a president who's behaved in this manner. No, we haven't. Maybe we haven't. But this is a future. And if we don't learn that, okay, this is detrimental, we don't have a president who's making threats on certain levels, then we have to say, wait, why is this government, you know, meshing itself into every aspect of society? And it's not great. The government's not really designed to do that, but it's happening. Where even with the Republicans getting into religion and they're mixing that with the military and they're getting, you know, having the church behind them when they're speaking. And then it's just a show. And what I'm concerned about is when we impart religion, even in politics too much, then we have to be very concerned just because there are different religions. There are different ethnicities and cultures in the United States that need to be thought of and represented. And if you just have one, then you're not changing. You're using the old guard. We have to get away from that mentality. So I'm saying I'm very concerned. Even the church, like I said, it has its place. It has its history. However, they're all meshing. And I'm concerned that the people are not, they're acting like they're surprised that this is happening. Oh, the church is involved. We're upset because Donald Trump had us you know, in, in Washington where we were, he was speaking on our behalf or there's military men who walked away because they didn't like what he said. These are experienced men. We could point the finger all day long. And what I'm saying, what it really leads down to is the people are not monitoring the process. And we are finding it too hard to get the basics done. And that's because we're putting people in charge who really aren't experienced in this arena or haven't put their time in and it's costing us. And this is where it's costing us. I think above all else, we have to show care for everyone. If that's one quality a president should have, it's the empathy and understanding of all the basics, not one or the other, is the empathy and understanding of all human beings to say, listen, this is a platform. Yes, we have to take care of business. Yes, we have the social, but we do have to understand that rule number one is we don't pit each other against each other. And if there are ones that are feeling threatened that are going to harm each other or harm society in general and tear down our communities, we have to denounce that. We have to say, no, that's not. Just like I'm not going for any violence, I'm not going to speak up and support anyone. I will denounce it. And it can't just be about votes. It has to be about what do we want in our country. We want, we can have our troubles and we're having them. But what do we want? Do we want division? And at the highest level, if there are people out there seeing that there's division out there, then there's nothing moving forward. And that is what the United States is doing. There's a division right now, and it's chaotic. However, we have to look at us, our democracy, and say, what should we be thinking about? We should be thinking about the process and the influences, and what do we stand for? And how are we losing our connection to our world communities? If we are doing that, we better learn. And see, that's a Donald Trump world, and it's not really... Hard to understand. Sure, he has a history. Sure, he saved taxes like many millionaires do. That how are you gonna get rich if you don't use the system? Just because you got people, accountants, lawyers who are in place that know how to get around the system, it doesn't mean we won't go after them. But it's just become the norm where the few, right, are controlling the many in the United States. And really, if you have that percentage. 
right? If you have that percentage that are controlling, inappropriately controlling, and taking all for themselves, making billions of dollars during the pandemic, we all should be worried. We all should be. Is there something wrong with wealth? No, but we all should be worried when that wealth peers its ugly head. And what a lot of people don't understand is that, especially during economics, and a lot of this presidency is about economics. And what do I mean? Well, first of all, when you have a basic understanding of how the economy works, even in the United States, then you need to understand that there are four ways that the economy gets back on its feet. One is taxes, taxing the people, right? When people work, they taxes, taxes, build infrastructure and so on and so on, pays bills, that's taxes. The other one is through investment, the government investing in society, right? Where they take money and they build uh, or they invest in businesses to keep them thriving and growing. That's another way. Business, businesses that earn profits working inside and outside the country. They bring profits to and from through trade. That's another way. And also the other way we make money is through the rich. And it's so funny that during these chaotic times, we have a lot of unrest, social unrest. And that is what, like if you study anything about the economy, a lot of people seen this coming. And I know that sounds redundant, but it's not. This is how it is. And isn't it funny how during this time when the people who are most needy, who need the support and they need this money to survive, they're fighting at each other. They're struggling. They're worried. They're insecure. And what is happening is they're unsettled. And that's the way the rich want it. Because look at they're making all kinds of money. How is that a democracy when you're living in a country Right. And the rich are the standing out as richer and they're benefiting off of the poor. So the government, even in the United States, knows that that's the fourth way for the economy to balance itself out is to get money. Where do we get our money from? We would have to get it from the rich people. They don't want that. So believe it or not, there's a lot of chaos, a lot of strife. And that's why these bills aren't being passed, these relief bills in the United States, because these people who have money are going, nah, we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't give this, and if we do that, it's going to... No, no, right now, they need to put the cards on the table and take care of the people. At what cost? All they're doing is printing up money anyway. I told you, the economic system that we have and we've had for 100 years, it's faded. It doesn't work. And it's going to keep, you could keep pumping the money in and it's a system that we've been applying for so long. It's debt, it's taxes, it's the rich. But my thing is, is that during a pandemic, no one should want for anything. We have all the resources in each country to share, to get the people back on their feet, to limit the spread. To make sure we have enough resources. But this is not what is happening. And so we have to be careful. And we can't just worry about the world watching. We have to watch ourselves. And even in Canada, we're settling. We settle. We do. We we know what's going on. We have the politicians in place, but we know what's going on. We see uh, the corruption. We see the SN. See Lavalins coming in there. Oh, they're giving us business, but they're. This is how business is done around the world, right? You pay money out. It's competition. My thing is, where are the values? The values, we have to get back to the values. Now, during that debate, we've seen and heard a lot about Donald Trump interrupting. He's had some points. He's gotten strong. He's even went on the attack. And we could really go after Donald Trump for a lot of things, but that's nothing. Now, we've had four years of this. He could blame forest management for environment. He could say this, that, but he's been in power for four years and he's done a number of good things, but he's also done a number of things that show his inexperience. When it comes to Joe Biden, what I can say is this. I'm going to go with Joe Biden on his merits and I'm saying he has a history and he's earned his stripes and One thing I got to say is he's been the vice president before. And there are some great things that have happened. There were some things that were not so great that have happened in the past. Um, However, what we do need to focus on 
during these times is the people. Making sure the people are taken care of and make sure that they have a future and make sure that we stop all this inner fighting and balance things out. So that is what we need right now. We need someone in place that looks at a perspective. Now, when it comes to Joe Biden, I would have to say that he's had the history of trying to make the country better. And at this point, I think what we do need is we need to say somewhere along the line that Joe Biden has the experience and the knowledge to make some change. And it doesn't hurt to give him some opportunity to do that. And he has Kamala Harris working with him. And I think that's a great thing as well. I think me personally, I think that there are good things that could happen for the democracy if we have the people focus going on. We understand the business, but the people focus has to start being emphasized. And I think he could do that with the support of Kamala Harris. And uh, I think as well that he should be given a chance. I'm not saying he's necessarily going to win because my concern is that when people get food on the table, they will vote to keep that food on the table, regardless of the social issues out there that need to be addressed. So I think people need to consider that. All right. I just think at this point, we can't have politicians in place that are not being able to speak to the people. And I think when Joe Biden was talking, he made a very good point, many good points, Uh he did react to Donald Trump. It's hard not to when somebody's interrupting constantly. However, I would say that, you know, he was attacked in certain areas about his son and this is what it is. And he's made some comments as well. However, he stood up and the people need to see that there are a lot of young people out there who are struggling. When he talks about his family members, which usually debates don't usually get that personal. Somehow it turned into that. And I'm concerned that when we're getting dragged in, uh, it was a tough debate, but Joe Biden, like I said, uh, he's been in power before. What's really changed? There's been some good things that have happened. There could be a lot more improvement. I think the process, the system that we're operating under in the United States, it really needs to be enhanced for the better. We need to stop just you know, letting people off of being ousted of the presidency. It almost seems like it's impossible when someone in president place does something wrong immoral and we don't hold them accountable see that was where we started that was a problem years back when we stopped making politicians especially the presidents accountable for their actions i'm sorry if you're doing some of the things that i've seen in the last 20 years i would say you should not be running the country you should not have your finger on the button and when you see someone, see, we even got to the point where we see someone uh, almost starting war and we're all waiting at bated breath, like, you know, and planes get blown up in response. Everybody looks the other way and goes, "Woo, we just avoided that. Well, we didn't even know it was coming. That's scary. So that's why I said there's a history there. But when it comes to Joe Biden, I will say um, he might have some history there and that counts for something. And I think more than now, and I think it's the timing. I think the timing is where we need some calm and we need some collaboration and we need someone who has experience and someone who's willing to listen to all sides and someone who's not just taking sides, except for the people, right? Think about the people. Think about giving power to the people. Give it back to the people. Let's take it from the top and start giving it to the people, the young people, right? Let's start taking care of our people. We stop doing that. And that's what United States has done. They stopped taking care of the people. Like if we're putting like, let's forget Obama's name, for example. I want to do that for a minute. I want to say everybody talks about Obama and all the things he's done and how it's good. No, Obama was a president for the people. Like in Canada, we have health care. The United States should have health care. Why? Because they're calling it a democracy where people are uh, have businesses and they can compete and it's good for the company, it's good for the country. Obama was a people president. And could he do more? Yes, he could. But if we start somewhere, 
with a person who's trying to put in legislation and policies despite fighting at the Senate floor, it appearing bad. But when you could see overall someone is caring about the people, then that's justification for presidency. That is someone who's trying for the people, right? And that is one of the issues in politics today is we're doing too much inner fighting and there's no balance and rules and laws that don't get passed is because we're not focused on just the people, not just the rich people, the people. How could you ride through some of these states and look at some of the conditions and we don't understand there's certain people that, you know, it doesn't matter amount of money that you give them, they're going to have some challenges. So we have to support them. We got to let people support themselves. We got to provide opportunities. So if we have presidents that can bring that, even start it, initiate it. And I think that's what Obama did. He started to initiate and it's a good thing. And our relations around the world, they matter. And if Donald Trump is saying, well, listen, we're not going to work with the WHO and let us down. Well, let's look at that. Let's not just take that as a statement, but let's work with them to make it better. Let's not just isolate and go, oh, well, we can't. And if we do have to dismantle and we look at the process as a people and we want to support each other, maybe there was something with um, this COVID-19 that we don't know. However, if you're calling it a China disease, we're pitting people against each other and we can't do that. We have Chinese people all over the world and how must they feel, right? When we're just calling it a Chinese, that we're victimizing so many people for a handful of people who might've made the wrong decisions. Everybody's getting painted and that's what's worrisome. So what I'm saying is if we had a president in the place that was initiating policies and laws that is for the betterment of the people. That's what we need. That's what we're going to need moving forward. We need to establish relations, good relations. And if Donald Trump gets in power again, then we need to understand that that we as people got to have more say into what the president's doing, as opposed to just following these old laws. And just because the Republicans have a certain amount of seats, we have to stand up as a people and say, wait, there's too many people being left behind. We've got to do some changes, but just running away is not going to do it. There are a lot of things that were in place that needed change, but this is not the time, especially during the pandemic, for us to panic, separate ourselves, and just take care of ourselves. We can take care of ourselves and a lot of other people too if we stand up and we say we have to keep our eye on the world because a democracy is not just about a country. It's a worldwide wave. It's a worldwide influence. It's a worldwide responsibility. It's a worldwide way of thinking for all people. Whether you follow one regime or not, you should have the right to have choice. And that's what we need. So as far as I'm concerned, I would say Joe Biden is connected to the Obama and anybody who's trying to make life better. Maybe this business aspect that we're going on isn't going to do it just business, but somehow we have to come together, as I said, with the social, the business, and the government, right? And the environment. We we can't overlook the environment. What are we doing? What is the problem? Why are we so... See, it, politics over the people. The economy is not going to matter if we're not here. It just won't. People are worried about, well, what are we going to do if we switch everything to green and no one's going to have any jobs. We make jobs. Just like we bail banks out, we make jobs. We give people things to do. There are a lot of things to do. There's a lot of work to do around the world. If you give everybody in the United States and Canada two weeks of the year where you say, all right, you're going to do some commitment and you're going to make sure that part of your job is helping other people around the world, supporting them, right? In any way to bring their level of living up so that they can thrive and survive. Instead of us competing, if we could do some commitment to the world, the world, around the world, there's a lot of need out there. There's a lot of hunger, a lot of starvation. 
if we could work with people to commit some of our time and work in our own countries to do that. And if you start with your country and you work around the world, we're going to be better people. I just think that what we're doing is we're following this economic system that we have that needs changing because clearly we're hitting more recessions than we've had in the last 40 years. Every few years we're hitting a recession. We don't even know if we're in a recession anymore because we're, you know, the interest rates are falling so low. It's not even a stimulus anymore. It's just this whole thing. If you understand the whole gamut of what's going on in the world today, if we could just focus on the pandemic and getting everyone, not just Americans or Canadians, if we can make sure everyone has the supplies, we can start there. But it's that's just the beginning. What we also have to look at is what we're doing to the environment, why these viruses are popping up, and why are they getting out of control? Why do we need to find these vaccines because they're killing millions of people? Why? Because something we're not doing right. We're ignoring either people when they're saying, oh, people are eating this and it's causing this. Well, why are they eating that? Because maybe they don't have the necessary nutrients and resources that they need. And you would think in these times of technology, when these organizations like Amazon, and that's also worrying me as well, these mega organizations, these monopolies, sure, they're controlling too much. Like, see, during the pandemic, you know what? These monopolies, these mergers and monopolies that are happening, control everything. There's only five or six companies that have controlled the economy for the last five, the stock market, basically, for the last five years. And see, during the pandemic, we get to see that. We get to see that the Amazons, if they don't have it, we're not getting it. I don't care. If they don't have it, you're not getting it. And if you don't have a credit card, think about that. It's so terrible that if you don't have a credit card or an account with money, you got nothing. You you don't have resources. You have people paying through their arm and their leg for the medication. So when Obama is trying to get these programs in and the Republicans are fighting it, of course, a lot of them, because they have their business, they're like, well, what's going to happen to me if my business is going to go down or, you know, it's private health care. Listen, if you have a family of children and you have to pick which children are getting the services and which doesn't, which ones don't get the service or the treatment that they need. So if you have a family of children and you have to pick who gets the treatment. That's not a family. That's not a family. So what has to happen is we have to stop that. We got to say, wait, we got to set the limit and say, look, universal health care, we have to put it in place. It doesn't take a genius to look around. If the companies that are in there, these big pharmaceutical companies out there, and if you people have any sense, you're going to look at these commercials. It's funny because if you're living in Canada and they have all these companies out there that are talking about drugs that you get, and they're good for you. They don't do it as much as the United States. But the one thing I can say about United States is at least they let you know. Like, you know, when you see medications on there, it's funny because they have these obligations to let you know the side effects, which is good. However, I used to say, well, why are we hearing all this? Man, after I hear all this, I'm scared to death. I wouldn't want to take it. But then at the same time, I'm realizing that they're doing it to cover their bums, Right. These big pharmaceuticals are doing it to cover the bombs. They have a right to make a certain profit, but not over the people. Not over the people. You're set, letting us know in Canada. We don't even do that. We don't even let people know. In Canada here, you know, you get the medication. If you're told about the side effects, it's after it's hit you already. And then you don't even have any of these rights because we're, we're silent about it. We don't let people know what's going to kill them until it kills them and it's too late. That's unfortunate. We have a big problem here in Canada, and I could go on and on, and you know I'm going to do that. But if I'm talking about the United States, they do tell you about these things. It doesn't make it a lot better, but it does inform the people, at least, to what they're getting. It doesn't make it better, but it is a system that's in place. And once that system, that billion, trillion dollar system is in place, it's hard to break. And that's politics and profit over the people. And see, it doesn't matter if you live in a $50 million house if I see this whole community torn down and struggling, I have to say, something's not working right. Something needs change. 
And it's not just the Democrats or the Republicans. Something's not working. We're not including a certain segment of society. So if we have a party that has started it, we have to start somewhere. Because we've got to look and say, it is needed. It's not hard to do. We're supposed to be a wealthy company. Country, sorry. And why aren't we taking care of our people on a basic level? And see, now we have, what do we have? We have the pandemic. We're at close to 200,000 Americans dead. Uh, oh, I don't know. We have a couple million infected and it seems to be growing. And my thing is, it's not about just the vaccine. It's about what we've seen. And it's not good management. And it could not just be management. It could also be that there weren't safeguards in place because there are certain segment of society that has not gotten their basics. And they're not looked after. So there's a lot of change that needs to happen. And I think more now than ever in history, we have to work together. And we have to understand that people have to be over the politics and the profit. We got to take care of the people. And I don't, we have to start in our own land, but we still have to be connected to all lands. And there are great things that United States and other countries do do. However, it's not going to help putting them down. The only thing that's going to help us as a world, as a country, as human beings, is if we work together and we start acknowledging that we have to work together on the basics. Start with the values. Our values have to be rechecked. Our system, this inner fighting has to stop. And when we have groups stepping up, going against, we do not support that. And when we see that, we have to make changes. Okay? And we have to be aware of our lack of participation in the world is detrimental to our survival. And let's acknowledge that this environmental issue that we have, it's not going to change. And when we have young people like Greta going around the world telling us, right? Even politicians going around telling us like Gore, that this planet is doomed. If we don't start changing our minds, what else are we doing? We have to pay attention. And we don't want to wait till it's too late. And it's to me, it's getting way past too late because we are putting profit in politics over the people. And we have to step back and say, no, let's make some immediate changes. This is a time more than any time when you can put people back at home because of this pandemic. Let's give them things to do and think about. Let's create some think tanks out there. We need some think tanks. So when they're thinking and sitting at home, they're coming up. They're innovating. They're coming up with um, ideas and plans so that we can execute how we can reverse this cycle. Don't just lock them up. Let's give resources to young people, people who are experienced, the scientists. And let's, people, let's get back our credit when it comes to our scientists. Let's not dismiss them, please. We These people are born in facts and they're spending their lives figuring, discovering and working towards things that are for the betterment of the people and trying to understand our existence. And they're making our lives better if we allow them to. However, if we are mired in this disbelief in this fantasy world that no, they don't matter, that's a that's a 200 year history that's gone flushed down the toilet over neglect and denial. And we can't do that. So let's get to the scientists. Let the scientists start speaking. They should be sitting up there now that, hey, man, I keep adding to the panel. OK, so we talked about the government. We talked about the social. We talked about the business. We talked about the environment. Those are decision makers. They all should be working together. OK, and scientists should be included in that as well, because you don't even need to be a scientist to see what's happening. We got mass communication out there that tells us the basic things that are even happening in the North Pole. But if you're worried about your child's violence, the hunger, uh, work, you know, instability in the home, 
You're not even caring about what tomorrow will bring because today is so devastating to the people. So I want to say the debate, we could all criticize, but we have to be accountable and take some responsibility. If we put leadership in that only has one-sided focus, we can't get mad at that. We put them in there. We have to look at the system and change it. And we have opportunities to change. That's why it's every four years we're making the changes. And we're going to do that. We're going to continue to make those changes. So let's do that. Let's start thinking. The Joe Biden, he did what he can do. He got a little agitated. Uh, however, if we can think about people who are worried about the people and um, who actually have an opportunity to make some real change, I think the change should continue as far as the basics that we started. And I think we started even healthcare for people. And I think now more than ever, we have to focus on making and taking care of the people. And so let's get back to that. If we have a Joe Biden, um, great. Let's put someone in place that could, you know, understand he has a history and he's got his head in the right place. And people have to understand we cannot be fighting each other, especially during these turbulent times. We have to work together. And if we can put some leadership in where we do work together, I think if Donald Trump stops all this um, reactionary behavior and starts owning some of this, he has a very strong business background. However, what's called for now is business, social, and environment formulas to help the people. And if you can't do that, if you can't bring people together, and you have a tendency to pull us apart. And even if you say pulling them apart for good reason, to me, it's better you know who you're working with than you don't know. And I think that's why a lot of the generals out there who have fallen to the wayside when it came to Donald Trump is because they said, listen, uh, we have a world out there that's troubling. And there are forces at play that if we don't keep an eye on, to some degree, and I'm serious, that sounds, um, it, it really sounds like a controlling, right? A controlling entity, but it's really about monitoring and trying to work with people and create democratic societies out there and sustain them. And I think what is happening is there are generals out there and veterans who've worked in the field who actually work to make the country great. And if they've had to step aside, it's because they're worried, they're concerned that we are not keeping our eyes on the prize. And the history that we've had is not going to be so great because there are people working together against democracy. So we have to be out there, not manipulating, not creating wars, but we do need to be present. If we're not present, we're absent. And absent-minded people isolate themselves from the rest of the world. So let's get it together and understand that some of the people who have been in their positions a lot longer than a term of presidency might have something that they're really concerned about. And we should be concerned as well because they know what's going on on the ground. But as far as our home, I'm going to tell you, even with the Black Lives Matter, um, I think really there's a lot of wonderful things that are happening and a lot of terrible things that are happening. But what is good, I'm finding, is that there's a lot of people who are coming together and they're actually standing up. But that's just the beginning. What we really need to do is we need to start working together, not just on the ground level. We need to work together all through our government on a macro level. We need to understand that there are issues that we need to tackle. And there's always going to be room for improvement. So let's work together. So Black Lives Matter does matter. However, I'm concerned that it's showing that it's not mattering. But it does. But the problem is we're putting people in power that are saying, well, we've got other issues. That's not my issue. And my concern is all issues of oppression and violence and discrimination and degradation are our issue. So the debates that we saw is what's going on in America. 
not what's going on between Biden and Trump. So I want to say thank you to my listeners. You know, um, we always have lots to talk about because there's a lot to do in the world. We have the commitment and understanding to serve if you have the power to serve your fellow human being to make life better, then we do that. We do not pit each other against each other in any circumstances, especially during crisis. However, let's lift up our people, all of our people from every culture and every race and start understanding that this is our planet and our planet is in trouble. And when the planet's in trouble, the people are in trouble because the people are ignoring it. They're ignoring our planet issues. They're, they're ignoring so much. It's And it's so sad because we have the most supposedly the most advanced society we've ever had. But it seems like it's sliding in a lot of ways. So let's get a grip and get it together. And I want my listeners to be like the wise old bird and spread the word. Okay? So take care. We had a great conversation today. And honestly... You matter. Black lives have to start mattering. They do. They do. But we have to clean up our house. We have to clean up our house. And a lot of you know what I mean. We have to clean up our house and start making it better. Because this pandemic is just one of the issues. It's just a symptom to the bigger issue. We can handle this pandemic. We could. We could work together. With the, we could find ways to handle the pandemic. But that's not what this is. To me, it's a reset. And we should be looking at what's going on, not just judging and pointing a finger and saying, you're the bad guy. Because that's what we do. When we point the finger and say that that person right there is just the bad guy, let's just get rid of him. That's where we have a problem in this world. Because we are good at pointing it out. Everyone has a good and a bad side. Okay, it's just what do you decide to live with? What side are you? Are you on the side of greed? You on the side of need? So figure it out. So thank you, my listeners. And I want you to take care until we speak again. It's been a good conversation. Um, Maybe next debate. Take care.